Hey folks, James Millard here, Operations Manager for Olympic Peninsula Skagit Tactics. And today I'm going to tie a fly I, I've come up with that's called the Chingasa. See it here in front of you. It's kind of a guide style fly tied in the uh, Scandinavian tradition on a tube. Um, we like to tie this in a bunch of different lengths and colors. It'll work great for winter fish, summer fish. Um, in this video, we're going to tie the fly in this smaller early summer configuration. So, hope you enjoy. So, to get started on this, we've got um, a Pro Sport Fisher 5052 um, on our mandrel here. You can use any tube you would like, any tube system you prefer. I have a lot of the Pro stuff. I chose a black and an orange tube to kind of match the front and back of the fly when I put the cone on, but you don't have to do that. Um, we'll just start a quick, you know, thread wrap right kind of towards the back. Three or four wraps. Um, to get it secured, and then I'm going to throw a dubbing loop in to begin this right away. Um, so, as we've learned, throw in our nice loop, tie a few steps in, throw our bobbin around it twice to close it off, and then finish it all the way to where the junction comes together with the tube you're tying on, however you're going to do this. On the back, and then get ready to put your hair and flash in. So to get started on this, we've got um, a Pro Sport Fisher 5052 um, on our mandrel here. You can use any tube you would like, any tube system you'd prefer. I have a lot of the Pro stuff. I chose a black and an orange tube to kind of match the front and back of the fly when I put the cone on, but you don't have to do that. Um, we'll just start a quick you know, thread wrap right kind of towards the back, three or four wraps um, to get it secured, and then I'm going to throw a dubbing loop in to begin this right away. Um, so, as we've learned, throw in our nice loop, tie a few steps in, throw our bobbin around it twice to close it off, and then finish it all the way to where the junction comes together with the tube you're tying on, however you're going to do this. On the back, and then get ready to put your hair and flash in. So the first step of this fly after the uh, dubbing loop is put in is to do a little mini, uh, you know, hair collar. Not quite like a composite loop because we're not using all that dubbing and stuff, which, you know, can end up bulking up your fly a little bit more than you need in some situations. We tie this fly in a fuller configuration, but this is going to be used in the summer, so we're going to keep things pretty sparse. So we have our uh, Pro Sport Fisher American Possum in there. And I've taken this uh, black angel hair. There's a bunch of different um, kind of angel hair flashes or whatever you could use in this. Um, they've got some that have silver mixed in with the black or whatever. This is just a real iridescent, um, real iridescent kind of a black. So it's going to give us a nice undershine, but not too much flash since this is a summer fly. So I'm just going to lay this right over the top, right over the top of that, spread it out a little bit. Now that that's spread out, I'm going to cut the butt splush, and we're going to load this in our loop just like this. As soon as we get this scrap cleared off, notice I'm using both my hands to keep everything kind of together, but I'll come in and I'll smash this down with the palm of my hand so too much doesn't stick to it. We get it kind of stuck together. We want to grab all the long, you know, trailing fibers. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this and slide it towards the end of the table. And that way I can grab it and load my loop without having it all come apart too bad. So from here, we're going to load this flash in here into our dubbing loop and spin it up. I have my dubbing spinner close, so I don't have to reach around for things right on the base of my vise. I'll go ahead and position the hair, slide it, to the edge of the paper, slide the page paper off the edge, and grab everything so I can load it correctly. Nothing got all unshifted. Go ahead and load it into the loop real delicately, and then close everything off with our trusty OPSC dubbing spinner. Now I'm going to try to measure my proportions. I don't want this to come much farther than the end of my junction tubing, maybe a little bit. So I pull it in there and then I spread it out. And I'll use my, my bodkin to help me get it even too. So you want it to be translucent and even. 
which means there's no gaps and there's no clumps. So it'll spin up nice and smoothly for you, and it'll fold over and um, wrap nice and smoothly too. So just take a little bit of time. A nice sharp bodkin, like you see I have here, helps. So we'll go ahead and all that good, and we're going to trim the ends of these butts. Now the shorter you trim them, the softer the shoulder is. The longer you leave them, the stiffer the shoulder is. And so since I'm going to be balancing a hair wing over the top, I'm going to leave them with some butts, you know, maybe a quarter inch, eighth of an inch. So it'll have some spring. Snap everything nice and even. Everything's nice and Spread out a little bit more here on the bottom of those clumps. And if you can't spread the clumps, don't be afraid to come over here on the on the uncut side and pull it out. Because really less is more, as they say on in dubbing loops. So now that everything's nice and cleaned up, I'm gonna go ahead and pinch right below my materials and spin my dubbing spinner nice and hard with my two fingers. So it spins up nice and tight. And then I'm going to draw back up and continue tightening that. So that's nice and tightened in there. I'll take my bodkin and run through real fast just to get all the big loops plucked out. Get some of those materials separated. And then we're going to go to our trusty toothbrush and really pound on this thing to get it to get some of the longer and trapped fibers out that we want to wiggle around in there. You stop hearing the plucking noise from your bodkin catching stuff, which I have. We'll switch over to our trusty toothbrush and then just kind of vigorously brush down, brush up, brush down, brush back up. I use a stiff toothbrush to get this to happen. So we've got a nice little hair and flash hackle that we've made. So before I wrap this, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this like a guitar string, pluck it three or four times, making sure that the open end of our dubbing spinner loop is, or hook is aimed towards us so we don't pluck it off the hook, which can be frustrating. And then we're ready to fold and wrap. And so now that we have this little hackle spun up, I'm gonna go ahead and you know, make sure it's neutral like I did a second ago. I'm going to start combing these fibers towards the main part of the vise. To me, that's the left. If you're a left-handed tire, it'd be to the right. But I just kind of comb everything over the thread, and then I'm going to use a little bit of water that I have off screen here and really wet this down and fold it over the thread. I'm going to do this a couple of times. Um, this angel hair tends to be stiff in this kind of a it's shiny black configuration. I don't remember the exact name of it. So a little bit of water go a little bit of more water than you normally use goes a long way here um, but this is going to spring back really nicely and hold that hair wing up great so now that everything's folded I'm just going to start making touching wraps covering all the thread that goes up to the uh, junction tubing here I don't want to overlap my wraps I'm going to pull everything back then as I wrap forward on the bottom I'm actually going to pull my if you can see what I'm doing with my thread I'm pulling forward a little bit to make sure I'm not overlapping. You want touching wraps, but not overlapping wraps. Overlapping wraps will trap all your material. So you can see that. So just a couple of touching wraps. It should only give me about four. That's two. Three. No, just about three. If you want three to four, no more than four. Three is about optimal. You don't want a lot of material back there. This off. Three quick wraps, that's all you need to tie this on. Take your bodkin and separate some of this stuff. Then just brush it forward and brush it back with your toothbrush to free the, everything up. This is going to be a two effect kind of a part of the fly this this collar I put in it's gonna give us some little under flash and some and some fish attraction but it's also going to be holding up that hair wing giving it some profile so 
That's what I like about that. So instead of having to tie a super complicated composite loop, you can just throw some flash on top of some hair and spin it up. Especially on these summer flies, they just look better. You can tie this fly in any length, color, configuration you want. You can add weight in the inside of it. You can add weight in the terms of its butts. You can add weight to the front of it. You can do whatever you like. This is going to be an early summer fly, so not tiny, but not huge and unweighted. So from here, we're going to throw in the hair wing. I'm using the Hairline's um, Fin Raccoon zonker strips. They come in long zonkers, and you can cut off the chunk you like and use it as a hair wing, which I'm going to do here. It's going to be a pretty short hair wing. Um, this is probably total an inch and a half, inch and three quarters. I don't want it too big. Again, this is an early summer fly. This would be a good late winter fly, too. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of do some loose gathering wraps. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn my rotary vise. If you don't have a rotary vise, you're going to have to come out to the front and look at it from the front. But um, I'm going to look at it over the top. And make sure that everything's centered because this hair wing is going to keep this fly riding the way you want. And if it's cocked off to the side over here, if it's cocked off to the side over here, it's going to, you know, not ride true. Um, so I'm liking what I see here. It looks pretty good to me. Got some short hairs. I'm going to trim out with some long hairs. These flies. I was first introduced to watching YouTube videos of Stuart Foxall and Nick Stewart and a few other guys that would tie these Scandinavian style two flies. They just look like leech flies to me. And that's what I really like about them. I'll go ahead and secure this down. We look like we're in a good spot for everything. So that gives quite a bump. We'll cover that up with stuff in a second. Yeah, I think these look like leech flies. And, you know, what's better than a string leech is a leech that has no string on it that you have to worry about. It's kind of the best of both worlds here. So from here, I'm going to add some OPST um, uh, saddle hackles in our new Grizzly configuration, which is cool. Um, we've uh, gotten our new saddle hackles in. We're super stoked with them, and we've got a natural Grizzly that looks really good. So I've got just a couple from the very bottom. You know, some of the feathers that you might not want to use on these smaller flies just look amazing. So you can strip these down and... Tie them in like that, which I think we're going to have to do on these smaller feathers. But you could also just tie them in, in a chunk on the bigger ones without stripping the feather off. But for this application, we're going to have to strip them. So, there's one side. Get it down, ready to go. And place that in. You want it to ride. You'll see when I tie it in on the opposite side towards the camera. A second how I'm laying them. That takes a couple of tries to get them right. And once you get them in there, boy, they look good in the water. Offset, and that will make them move independently of each other and not stick together. So that's kind of a cool tactic with these saddle hackles. One that's just a tiny bit shorter, like the naked eye can't even barely tell unless you really look, but it'll keep them moving independently. So those are mounted in real well, and I'm going to tie off these stems all the way to the front, just to give it a little extra durability. Um, you can even drop a dollop of glue on here right now, just to glue those in. I don't necessarily think it's critical you do it, but let's go ahead and trim that stem. There are certain things in flies that I think are just magical, and the saddle hackles are right up there with the other things I like, and we really have a nice, a nice product with these. So, check it from the top to make sure they're riding, you know, pretty much where I want them on the fly. You can wiggle them around in the position, and then the other materials will kind of hold everything in place. So, um, here we are. That looks pretty good to, whoops, that looks pretty good to me. Um, from here, we're just going to sort of finish this with uh, a little bit of flash and some hackles. And so, I'm using this, uh, Purple Flashaboo, um, it's a cool effect on this fly. It won't look purple, which is cool. It's a summer fly, so I'm only using one strand. Um, and even now, with some of these clear waters we have with low spring flows, that, uh, that well, the low spring flows that we have with the high spring flows, um, we might even cut this flash out 
Um, but I only start with one strand. You can do two if you like. I'm going to put it underneath the thread and wrap it over the top to get it set where I like it. I'm going to wrap forward twice so I can get the other piece set where I like. And then I'm going to pull it forward and wrap forward twice. I want to build a lot of bulk in this head. Above, well, it's not really the head of the fly, but the, the head of where I'm tying. Because I'm going to, you know, add some, some feathers and some stuff. You can leave this the flash long. I'm going to go ahead and trim it up now. I'm going to trim it just a little bit shorter than the hair. If you want it to be a little bit more prominent, you can um, trim it longer than the hair. So those are your choices. From here, I'm going to add a piece of um, marabou. This is the fish hunter marabou. Well, it's nature's spirit fish hunter marabou now, but it's real good. I'm using a nice short tip piece, so my marabou is not longer than my um, hair wing, which is a proportion thing again. So I'm going to wrap this in. You can use these other nicer, and so you notice I'm using kind of the small fluffy feather. They make real nice ones, and they have these really nice, you know, fibers, but these fibers are as long as the hair wing. And so what will happen is when I put this longer feather on, it'll overtake that, and you won't be able to see the different parts of the fly. So it's kind of nice. You can use the what most people consider scraps from the marabou for these flies because you just want that shorter piece in the front that's not, you know, getting in the way of the back of the fly at all or blending into the back of the fly. It helps give the fly some segmentation and negative space. So that negative space has all the spots that there are not material, so stuff can move. So as, I'm, as you see, I'm taking the edge of my scissors and very carefully scissor folding the hackle back, or the fibers of this marabou feathers back and marabou feather back, and I'm going to just start palmering. Again, touching but not overlapping wraps. Nice and you don't have to worry about being too careful with this because we're going to put a couple feathers in front of this to kind of cover anything else up that we haven't. So just about two or three turns. You know, I think I got two out of that. You don't want too much. Where we like to fish these flies in the winter, most flies in the winter, is in that soft inside seam. And this, these lighter fibers like marabou really start to swim great in those soft inside, you know, pillow water sort of seams. So that's why I like to use that marabou. Two or three turns to lock it out, and that's it. I'm going to flip it and trim it. From here, I'm going to add a nice slapping feather, all black. You could, again, do any color you want here, but this is a summer fly, nice and more natural with a few highlight colors. Um, I don't like to get too flashy with my summer flies, although I learned an important lesson this weekend. Fished a winter color that was told to myself and my friend James Awase. We should fish, and I'm like, gosh, that's a winter color. But I listened. And I hooked a fish first run. So, you know, these early season fish will eat less natural colors, more winter style colors. As we start to fish on, these darker colors start to really shine. I'm scissor folding my schlappen again. And just in a quick note, I did choose a schlappen feather where the fibers are, again, shorter than the marabou fibers. So they don't kind of overtake those. It's not super critical, but I think finished product really reflects, you know, the time taken to pick the right size fiber feathers. It just the proportions look well and everything swims independently. So I'm only going to get three or four wraps out of this, which is all I want. Um, and in keeping with the theme, we're just going to do a black and white guinea feather in the front to kind of finish everything off before I add a cone. And we'll talk about the cone in a second. Not for weight, really. It's just more for... more for uh, the color effect in the front. And that's almost done. We have two more things to add. I will also put jungle cock at the very, very end of these sometimes. Um, I'm not going on this one because that can take a lot of time set that the feathers correctly, and you guys don't want to watch me struggle with that. So we're not going to do that this time. I'm got, I got a guinea feather, just a natural black and white to kind of you know, kind of match the theme of the fly. I'm going to strip one side because this is mostly just for effect. 
as far as visual effect, I mean, but there's also the cool uh, deal with these guinea feathers in the front of a fly. It breaks the current and gives the stuff in the back a little bit of a, a break to swim. So I'm going to go ahead and swim down a little more. So just kind of more of a knot. Just all that in there. I'm going to tie it in again tip first, just like the other two were, were tied in. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I like to tie them in tip first. I don't necessarily have to. I don't know many that don't, but I like to tip first. I always saw it. Quick scissor fold. A quick scissor fold on this because I'm taking one side of the feather off, as you saw, so it's going to wrap really well. So one, maybe only two wraps out of this. That was a half. Uh, there's one wrap. And you're going to get like maybe, yeah, maybe two total. That's it. That's all we want. Too much and it doesn't lay flat and it'll flare out a bunch and just not look cool. I mean, I don't know that the fish care, but I do. So, just a few wraps to trim this off because what we're going to do now is take our trusty uh, Loctite super glue. You can use any super glue you like with this. Um, I like the Loctite because it's waterproof. Um, comb everything back. You could whip finish this or half hitch it, but it's not necessary. You will take a small cone, and this is a small Pro, Spit, Pro Sport Fisher cone that you see here on the tip of my um, tube. And I'm going to drop a dollop of glue. I'll put a couple more wraps on it, give it something to soak into. But I'm going to drop a dollop of glue and just slide that right over the top, and it'll glue down real nice, and um, you don't even need to tie it off. If you wanted to tie this completely unweighted, I fish places like the North Umpqua River in the summer where I will fish something like this, but we can't have any weight on our flies, and I'm not sure if this counts as weight or not, so we leave it off. We'll make just a really nice thread head with red or orange thread to mimic what I'm about to do. Um, we choose a bright front to give it kind of an egg-sucking leech sort of uh, an effect. If you would ask me what color configuration of fly I would fish only for the rest of my life if I had to fish just one, it'd probably be an egg-sucking leech. I'm going to catch everything. So that's kind of the effect we're going with here. We're just going to get a little bit of glue on a lot. Really don't do a lot because you don't need a lot, and um, a lot will get shoved up into the fibers of the feathers behind the uh, cone and end up creating a lip that you won't like because it'll help keep the fly or will keep the fly from riding correctly. So glue's there. Slide that all the way up. Go ahead and look at everything. Pull your fibers around, and that is finished version of the Chingasso. There's a bunch of stuff you can do with this. This is actually a pretty small fly. You know, this is the lid of the super glue, so it's about the same size. This lid's about an inch and a half. You can tie these super long, you know. You can tie them even smaller if you've got smaller hair. You can change the color of this however you like, but when you swim this in the water, all this stuff kind of moves independently and just breathes and and just, I don't know, it's an, an incredible, um, incredible effect in the water. So you don't even need to do anything else with this. Just trim this right off. Um, all that thread is going to kind of uncurl a little bit inside that cone and then just become a bonded assembly. So once you're done with the tube, um, well, I mean, I'm not going to do it right here, but we'll pull this thing off the, um, the, the metal mandrel. I'll take a... Uh, hardback razor blade, or in this case I've got a double-sided razor blade I don't recommend because they're pretty dangerous. But we'll trim the tube like really close to the cone and then use a lighter and hit, hit, the, uh, hit the tip with the blue flame and let it roll back over the cone, sealing everything off fully. So, And that's why I chose the orange tube, because it's going to match the orange cone. I chose the black junction because it's going to match the black back of the fly. You could change that up. You could use orange in the back for a hot spot. You can do all kinds of stuff. This is just a platform. You tie whatever you want. So that, my friends, is the Chingasso. Kind of a hybrid, simplified version of the uh, popular Scandinavian two plies that you've seen tied online, no doubt. And uh, just kind of hybridized for kind of how we like to fish them. So appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for more fly tying videos from OPSC. Thanks a bunch. Have a good day.